America's darkest hour was looming. The industrial North and the agricultural South have always had their differences, and from the beginning, they always competed for political power. The power to lead, to set the agenda, to determine the future of our country, and for the South, that also meant the power to ensure slavery's continuation. None of us can truly imagine the horrors of slavery, the degradation, the humiliation, the shattering of families, the beatings, rape, pain, and privations. And yet for the South, their existence, their very way of life depended on slavery's preservation and even its expansion into other regions of the country. In 1854, Kansas was about to join the Union, and it was decided that the residents would determine for themselves whether slavery would be permitted there. To influence this vote, people from all over the North and South poured into Kansas, intent on making her either a free state or a slave state. The Northern Jayhawkers were pitted against the Southern border ruffians, and the result was a series of armed clashes which escalated into an undeclared civil war. Into this bloody, boiling crucible stepped an unlikely character, a poor dirt farmer from upstate New York. John Brown hailed from a religious family who deeply believed in freedom and equality for all. Both of his grandfathers fought in the American Revolution, and his father was a founding member of the Underground Railroad. Slavery was abhorrent to Brown, a crime against God and humanity. Years before, he had sworn an oath to dedicate his life to the destruction of slavery, and now, as an old man, he was finally living up to that pledge. He entered Kansas with the fury of a man possessed, a righteous prairie preacher who was determined to make his presence felt. He became known as a kind of avenging angel, a man willing to fight and die to rid the country of this dreaded scourge. And he was willing to do this by any means necessary. As the years unfolded, Brown became convinced that God had chosen him personally to destroy the institution of slavery. And like a latter-day Moses, he was to lead the slaves to freedom. So, on a cold, dark, rainy night in October 1859, Brown and 18 of his men attacked the Federal Armory at Harpers Ferry, Virginia, with the intent to steal as many weapons as they could and to incite a slave rebellion. This attack was also meant to signal to the South and to the country at large that John Brown's holy war had begun. The attack ended in disaster just two days later. And though most of Brown's men were captured or killed, Brown survived. He was put on trial, convicted of murder and treason, and sentenced to hang. Our film project, John Brown's Body, takes place in Brown's jail cell in the pre-dawn hours before he is to be hanged. And it covers the momentous events of his life that delivered him to that point. Oh,